Well, welcome everyone to our Q&A session. Today, as you see, there is a team of us and we are very happy that you take this course, you are interested and there, are, there were a lot of questions over the course of the course and therefore our team will invite, will answer all your questions. Today we have Claudia Pivnova, Olga Skaligop, Ivan Talkachev, welcome, and Ivan Poluyanchik. Hello, hello to everyone. And you know, we have a lot of questions, over 40 questions. And we will share some news with you, a bit of news, and we will answer those questions we got from very different countries. It's very interesting that they are from different countries. And now I will ask you, in case you have any questions, then our moderators could share the forms. So, so far, there are 41 questions to discuss today. Thank you. I see the form shared in the Russian chat box, super. And I will open up our questions so that it is easy for everyone and we can answer it. Well, the first question will be answered by Ivan Talkachev. This question is from Colombia, you and Timmy, which is shared, which is posted for CPU and RAM, could they be unstaked, deleted from the staken or lost? Ivan, can you answer this question, please? Yeah, I can. They can be returned, no reimbursed. You know, we have three resources, CPU, net, and RAM. CPU and net is like you rent uh, those resources from the company. You stake your UNTBs, and when you don't need CPU anymore and net anymore, computational power, you can unstake those UNTBs and have them back in your wallet. With the RAM, it's different. RAM, you have to buy it. And you use that resource when you do some transactions and uh, have some uh, actions taken in your wallet. And the part that you don't use, you can sell it, sell it to someone else by receiving UNTBs in the amount uh, that you um, are eligible according to the current exchange rate. But the UNTBs, let's say the memory that you're already using, you cannot really sell it back because you're using it. Hopefully I answered your question. Hopefully Claudia Montenegro got the answer and other users who were curious about the same issue. The second question, do we need to stake all UNTB for CPU and NAT or not? Who can answer this question, guys? I can take that question too. Well, you don't have to stake them all. You stake the amount that you need in order for you to make sure that your wallet functions fully on the black blockchain. If for some transactions you need more computational power in the form of CPU and net, then uh, you stake a certain number of UNTBs. If you need memory to take to make transactions on your uh, wallet, then you buy it. So the rest, the balance, the things that is left, you can store it in your wallet or you can move it to the exchange and trade it there. Thank you, Ivan. May I add it here, a few words, if it is possible. Look, view it as your own resource. If from this point of view, you believe that there are some activities to carry out, you need a higher resource, like in your daily life. And here, if you expect a lot of transactions, then 
have enough resources. If you don't plan a lot of transactions, then UNTB is your liability that could be disposed as an asset. So therefore, it depends on your needs and demands. I would like to add here too, this is Ivan speaking. So what I wanted to add here from the investor's point of view, as a person who spoke and delivered the first uh, lecture on the blockchain history development, div history of blockchain development. Let's take such an uh, example as Ethereum blockchain. If you remember, Ethereum used to cost pennies. So why uh, it is so popular and why it has become so expensive? Because Ethereum is needed not only for, you know, exchange and uh, sale, but also to write smart contracts and to create new coins. So currently, crypto unit blockchain is a young blockchain. And those who receive UNTBs right now, because they staked World CRU or any other way, then it is uh, like it's receiving Ethereum for free in uh, 2014, 2015. Well, not for free, but mine it really cheaply. And the number of people that need it as a resource is way lower than the number of people who have it. Then of course, the price of such a resource will be going down because the demand is lower than the supply. But with the adequate investment approach, you will understand the value of it. You will understand the value of it, of that resource, of that asset in the future. You will realize when this tipping point will arrive, when there are lots of businesses, people creating something on that blockchain, where there will be lots of transactions, when the resources will be scarce in deficit, the value will grow. And if the value grows, the price grows. That's why I want everyone to treat that asset not only in terms what to do with it or how to dispose of it, but no, consider it in terms of what kind of value it's going to have when our community, when our blockchain grows, when the new economic evolution, the world program is going to be implemented. If you try to foresee two, three steps ahead, moves ahead, then you will be in um, in advantage because nobody knew how Ethereum would develop when it was launched and back in 2014, uh, for 15, and now or Ethereum Bitcoin when it was launched in 2009, it's now it's like forty fifty thousand dollars and Ethereum is three thousand dollars. Imagine you are mining tokens that one day might cost the same. So the question is, is it worth selling it now or just uh, wait and accumulate because you don't really put any efforts into mining it, right? This is it for me. Thank you. Hopefully, Vector Serum from Chile got his question answered. I'd like to add CPU and NAT don't stake a lot of UNTB. You may stake only when there are large transactions, but you may keep them, store them on blockchain. And there is another question about RAM. We will explain it. And the most valuable thing is over the course and the first session and follow-up sessions, we try to explain the value of each token on crypto unit blockchain and over time this value will go up as there are a lot of applications and every month there will be new edit and more people will use this resource and the price for UNTB will be adequate therefore simply keep it on blockchain don't intend to sell them right away. The next question is from Evgenia Marchenko, Ukraine. It's obvious that a person is good at some fundamentals of blockchain. 
how can we determine when it is better to buy or sell RAM? A good question, by the way, from a person who is quite knowledgeable. And uh, look, today with us, we have Maxim Iskavets, who reviewed for us the whole blockchain from inside, crypto unit blockchain. And we asked Maxim to join us as well and help us and answer your questions. And if possible, Maxim, could you please demonstrate the blockchain review with the main page of blockchain? And we will show where to look at and insights of blockchain. There are two sites important to view. And Ivan, please comment this as well, as I know that quite often, so you monitor this. Are we waiting we for? Yes, hello, I'm here. This is Maxim, just give me a um, second. I will start screen sharing. We'll we will share with you some options. So my, uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Please go to info, info tab, and a bit lower. Ivan, the floor is yours. Okay, I'm here. We can see the blockchain statistics in CPU, net, and RAM. You can see RAM, it's 72.45% uh, occupied. So you can see out of 40, 64 gigabyte, uh, 46 is used. So when should you buy and sell? Do not really try to sell all of your memory because if you do, you won't be able to carry out transactions. You should always have some kind of a memory reserve, RAM. So what does the memory price depend on? On two parameters. First, if there is always some kind of a constant price, the basic price established by the company, and second of all, there is this variable uh, price that depends on how much uh, memory is used, overall blockchain memory. You can see that right now, 72.45% is used of the entire overall memory. The higher this percentage, the more expensive memory is. So when the percentage goes as high as 90%, the company will have to decide whether to add more memory to the system so that blockchain would keep, up, keep on working. So when the company makes this decision, there will be more memory. This uh, percentage will go down and the memory will cost cheaper. So when you decide that right now you will buy more memory right now, cheap, and then you will sell it later on. Then uh, at when the memory usage is 90%, the price is gonna be quite high. But after talking to the developers, I um, found out one thing and I would like to share it with you. When the company adds more memory to the blockchain, it means that the maintenance costs of the blockchain increase for the company too. So even if the company decides to reduce the, well, the company will have to decide by how much the memory costs will be reduced because the system maintenance costs will increase. So it is not profitable for the company to reduce the memory cost too much. So it's at your own risk, you know, if the company adds more memory, it's not a given that the memory will the memory cost will in decrease you know the basic memory price might increase because of the company's decision uh, to 
increase it because of the increased maintenance costs. So maybe any of you colleagues have anything more to add? Maxim, if possible, please show and note that if you have some UNTBs in RAM and Maxim and Ivan showed this how it could be done, you may see important parameters, some of them. Now there is 72, 75. As soon as these parameters increase, 72, 45, you will see two important things. Maxim, please go to the inside of blockchain, inside the wallet. Yes, wallet. And click RAM itself. There was one of the questions. We will come back to it. Look, buy, sell, RAM. You click it here and look. Under this number. And actually, you can monitor this parameter, how many UNTBs, UNTBs available. 1.64 kilobytes and thanks Maxim for clicking this so that we can see it and in UNTB it is 74.89 but look some people would like to invest to RAM 100% to earn more. Some people understand that it is possible, but it's not always a very feasible strategy because RAM, its price may go down and therefore to keep 100% UNTBs in RAM is not a good idea. Therefore, part of it you may keep in RAM and you may have some increases, but don't invest 100% of your UNTBs available. Thank you, Maxim. Hopefully, Evgeny Marchenko got his question answered. We can terminate screen sharing. So please come back to the main page. And here, Olga will answer another question by William Chilintana from the United States. Initial profitability of UNTB is 40 UNTB per 1,000 CIUs or world CIUs staked, but I get less than 50% of this amount. What is the number of UNTB or amount of UNTB we get for CIUs or world CIU staked? So that it is clear. There are several types of incomes through staking of CIU, so world CIU. And here I will ask Olga to comment. And you pick up your pens, notebooks, and calculators to calculate your number. Maxim, could you please to info tab? Thank you. Olga? Let's have a look, first of all, for you to understand where these figures are taken from. If you know the formula and where to get the figures from, it will be easy to calculate. Well, let's have a look at the number of UNTBs mined in half a second. If you go here to UNTB, you will see it here. Look with your own eyes. Hopefully you see that as of today, it is 24 UNTB per block or per half a second. The next reduction will be up to 18 UNTBs, but within the next uh, 100, so uh, 24 UNTBs mined per half a second, 24 UNTBs per second. And let us estimate it together. If you multiply 48 by 60, you get 2,880 UNTBs per minute. 
And if you multiply it by another 60, you get 172,000 per hour. Hopefully you catch up with me. You keep up with me. But to multiply and understand how we mine, how much we mine a day, we multiply it by 24 and we get 4 million. 1,047,200, uh, 4,147,200 UNT bees per day for 24 hours. Now we need to estimate how much tokens you have staked. And uh, the amount of, token, of tokens this UNTB distributed. There are two types, CIUs staked for UNTB and world CIUs staked for UNTB. And by recalling, we can remember that when there was staking CIU for one CIU, 1 billion, 200 million. Ivan, could you please show it? We will click CIU and we'll see these figures. Look, friends, here, one million four hundred and six, one billion four hundred and sixty million nine hundred forty six. So from my memories, one point two billion staked and most of it is not staking for UNTB. Out of this available, we are to deduct 1.2 billion and we have 260 million approximately, if rounded. But we have world CIUs staked and world CIU, it's simpler. Maxim, go to world CIU, please. Thank you. Here, the whole staking amount for UNTB and therefore the amount which is here 23 billion 734 million 642 thousand should be added by 261 million CIUs staked for UNTB and altogether approximately the number of tokens is 24 billion staked CIUs and world CIUs together but I see it in the chat, you write this down. It's important to estimate out of this amount, 4 billion, 4 million, 147 million to be multiplied by 95% as this is the amount accrued to staking. So I see that some of our students were attentive, 95%, but this is the last month when there is this high percentage of accrual understaking, whereas next month it will be different. And 95% out of this, we get 3 million, 939,000, 840 UNTBs and we are to divide them by the approximate number of tokens 24 billion approximately this figure may change as the number of world CIU changes it goes up so therefore follow the statistics and here we get a coefficient point zero three zeros one six four point three zeros one six four sixteen this is the coefficient of the accrual of UNTB per one CIU or world CIU so dear friends I see in your chats your feedback we see it so please write down 
if over the course there are some questions, you may write them down. If you multiply this coefficient by the number of your tokens staked, you will learn your daily accrual of UNTB. So the number of UNTPs to be multiplied by the coefficient point three zeros hundred and sixty four sixteen. So this is the way you can calculate it. Blockchain is transparent. This account where we are currently in, let's have a look at those UNTBs accrued. I go to the account wallet staking and find all the transactions. Select UNTB, not CIU. All the transactions, a different button must be selected, transaction history. And look, here the blockchain is ongoing. There are changes, additions, improvements, and quite recently it was added, this function was added during our course, and through it, you can filter out over the whole period of your crypto wallet operational, the accrual of all the UNTBs. As far as I know, the internet is slow here. It's not about internet. Let me just refresh it. Yes, look, here they are. You select filter and UNTB. And these are your accruals of UNTBs. Well, you may filter out any token. CIUs received, USDU transferred, quite a convenient function as it shows the full picture. And this is another benefit of blockchain. It is transparent, hopefully, we managed to answer the question where to get figures from, how to estimate your accruals, and hopefully you all remember how to click buttons on the calculator if before you actually didn't use this function. Thank you, Olga. Let's move on. The next question is from Angelika Alexeva, Russia. And she asks whether it is possible on crypto unit blockchain to execute smart contracts. Yes, it is possible. And some of them have been executed, for instance, for some estimations and many other things. But if you mean or refer to smart contracts for businesses, this function will be available quite soon for the creation of different business projects there. The next question is from Rahul Yadav, India. How to withdraw UNTB from Unitex exchange and where, where is UNTB memo? Maxim, will you please show the exchange? Thank you. Please note that here there are all the balances available and UNTB memo, you may press click withdrawal. You press it and if you withdraw, you don't need to indicate UNTB memo, but please note, when you withdraw from exchange to blockchain, memo is not obligatory, whereas memo is very important when you deposit from blockchain to exchange. So please know this, when you deposit exchange, you must indicate those fields, these fields address, and the memo of the token you select. If it is UNTB, Maxim, do it once again, please. Deposit. 
UNTB Reposit Address and UNTB Memo. If you select a different token, it will be a different memo. So for different tokens, we have different memos. So copy and indicate those that are important. But when you withdraw, many face the following of how to withdraw. UNTB withdrawal, when you withdraw UNTB, you must indicate the address of the wallet you withdraw to. And it's important to understand that there is 10 UNTB commission and the minimum withdrawal of UNTB, CIU, or USDU is 50 US dollars worth in equivalent. 50 USDU in the, at this point. Therefore, if today you would like to withdraw 1,000 UNTB, you bought them at the exchange, 1,000 UNTB or 1,000 CIU, and would like to withdraw them to your blockchain, then at this price, it's not one UNTB or one CIU. So they are not worth of 50 US dollars. They cost less than 50 US dollars. Therefore, you must make sure that your number of tokens is at least 50 US dollars worth. If it is above, it's, uh, it's okay, but not under this amount. Well, I wanted to add something here. One thing I would like to draw a, uh, you know, simile and a comparison. For example, you have uh, several accounts in the bank and those um, accounts have different uh, account numbers. You have one bank, but different uh, account numbers. So the exchange is like um, a bank with different account numbers. So you need to specify, indicate the memo for the system to understand to which account you are sending your UNTBs. So we indicate the exchange address in the address, meaning that the money goes to the exchange. And then you need your memo to make the system understand where the money should go. It's like if you don't use the memo, it's like for you going to the bank. It's like you going to the bank and uh, simply sending the money to the bank without saying to whom, what bank account, what currency, etc. So if you just send the money to the exchange address, that money will go to the exchange address. It will it will not get lost, but they will not be shown on your wallet. The exchange will not know that this money is yours. So do not forget to specify the memo when you top up your exchange. I'd like to give you some hint. What to do if your number is under 50 US dollars in equivalent? What can you do? So you have some UNTBs at the exchange or CIU tokens, for example. You may simply add up to the required number and form the required amount and then withdraw to blockchain. You may have some spare tokens you may have or someone else may have. So address it somehow. If they are CIUs, they could mine, but if they are at exchange, they are suspended. So you can figure it out this way, resolve it this way. And I'd like to answer Svetlana if someone reads the chat. So she says that the format of the screen is not okay. You can press the gallery at the top and find it. And you may allocate the picture, navigate the picture as you want it to be. So she says that it is not quite seen, quite well seen. So please set it up for your convenience. So there is the image and the gallery. You pick up the gallery view. Okay, let's move on. Elizaveta Mironova asks, I created the second wallet and how can I top up it with World CIU? When I bought it, these World CIUs got to my first wallet. A good question, Maxim, stop 
screen sharing for the time being. When you buy World CIUs, you may buy World CIUs from UGP Group back office. And they are frozen in your blockchain, which is linked to your UGP Group back office. Therefore, you cannot transfer them to any other wallet because they are frozen. One year after, after your purchase, they will start unfreezing 1% monthly, and then you may freely dispose of them and transfer to other wallets. Sama Janezic, Slovenia. Is there a commission per selling RAM? Who would like to answer this question? Is there a fee for selling RAM? Well, uh, I think I'll take the hit because no one, there is no commission. It depends on the current cost. There is no commission on the sale or, pur or purchase of RAM. Thank you. And the next question I will add, look, any action on blockchain is your transaction and it's an entry which means minus your memory which equals to ram everything you do you occupy your ram like filling out each page on the node in the notebook so therefore to some extent it could be viewed as a fee but there is no fee Olga actually even managed to answer the next question. We are forward, Lucas, whether the RAM consumed when we carry out transactions. As you heard from Olga, yes, it does. It consumes quite modestly, but over time you should monitor it, yes. For each transaction, you make a payment, but the fee is quite small. But please note that at this point, RAM is consumed. Therefore, you will need UNTBs. The next one is Li Zhu from Vietnam. I transferred UNTB from blockchain wallet to Unitex exchange, but forgot to specify memo. Could I get my UNTBs transferred back? Yes, you can get them back, but for this, you are to contact the help desk and we recommend you to do it not this week, but next week, because Unitex Exchange suffers some transformations and additional staff are hired that will answer all the questions received by the help desk. And we recommend you to contact them next week preferably starting from the 1st of September, so that your question is fresh. How can we do it? Maxim, can you please show us the exchange page? Please note that at the bottom, there is a question mark at the bottom in the left-hand corner, yes, these icons, you press it, go there. Could you please make the white background? Look here, we see different categories of questions and you can press get support, this purple button. And please look, you may rewatch it how it could be done. 
please note that here there are different groups of questions. For instance, in case your question is about the exchange, not validated email or rejection of verification status or verification status denied, then you can use these categories. If your question is about topping up, in this particular case, this is crypto deposit, depositing your account, then go to this section. And here, it's important to indicate your username, email, your question and attach screenshots in your language or you translate it and fill out this form. And we recommend you to start filling it out starting from September the 1st when the help desk is updated. And then you will get questions to your answers very quickly. The intention of the company is that within 40 hours, you will definitely get your question answered. And please go back again. And look, in terms of trading, if you deposit or withdraw fiat, then there is another function, which is business opening. If you want to create your corporate account, and there are a lot of different reasons, you are an entrepreneur, and you would like some of the funding of the company to be invested, and it is available and feasible for many countries, you can apply here by business client. And there, when you write down your question, please note that it depends on your needs. And then, so you select the relevant category to filter out so that your question goes directly to the specialist that is in charge. Thank you, Maxim. Hopefully, we managed to make this question answered as well. Let's carry on. A second, please. It's clear about Memo how to transfer UNTB from Unitex Exchange to blockchain. This is a question by Ratul from India. We've just shown this. Alenka Bone from Slovenia is asking whether the additional exam will be available as I could not take it since the 22nd to the 24th of August. Look, there will be another option, another attempt. The course will continue and quite soon you will learn about the same course as before and then you can again take part in the test. If before you failed to pass the test, so then you may study the sessions of our course and pass your test and get some valuable gifts. Quite soon, you will learn about this course and what to expect in the new course. It will be a bit updated, but will share the most relevant and valuable things. So you may invite your existing partners, as well as your new people, your prospects, because after taking this course, these people will gain a lot of valuable information that will help them have a good earning. Let's move on. So this is from Willi Jimin, Netherlands. When can we carry out peer-to-peer -peer transfers of world CIUs in our wallets. Olga, will you answer this question, please? Or Ivan Polujanchik? 
look for you to make transfers your token must be liquid you must move it and it means that world ciu and its period of being frozen is 365 days the package you bought and starting from 366 day one percent of your big package will be unfrozen and you may um, transfer it peer to peer i would like also to add that most probably you will have to re refresh balances for the unfrozen because it's a small smart contract it's like with cru because people might access their accounts will not see their unfrozen wcru so will start panicking nothing works etc etc no that's not how it works you just refresh frozen and uh, it will work maybe not right away but eventually you will have your balance ivan please answer another question orange circle of ram must it be big or small well a very good question a funny one i don't really understand what you mean by big or small Maxim, could you please show us? Do you mean whether it's filled in or not? Yes, quite likely, yes. Oh, well, look. Well, as the thing is that this circle, full or not, shows you the usage of this particular resource. If you almost used it up, then most probably you won't be able to operate your wallet anymore. So you will have to, in this case, you have to buy more RAM. Imagine that the circle is full, then uh, you have to buy more. On the other hand, if it's zero, then you won't be able to do anything. That's you, you ran out of gas, you know, in your tank. Or for example, if you fill it in, completely like top it up then you won't be able to add anything to it anymore as for other resources well it's the same story here if your blockchain is too overloaded you have too many transactions running at the same time then you will have to stake more cpu and net but since our blockchain is not overloaded right now in terms of those resources so Probably everyone has a zero point something percent, lots of free space. Whereas RAM is quite used up because people actively send money to the exchange or receive money from the exchange. Exchange between themselves, stake, uh, refresh their balances, mine things. So all those things, uh, they take up memory. It all gets recorded in the blockchain and is stored some kind of a like some kind of a database who did when who received what and how much all this information is stored that's why ram memory is uh, you ran out of ram sooner than cpu and net you don't really have to use a lot of other resources for checking your balances but you still need to re use resources some resources when you click the button refresh balances you won't use up too much uh, net or cpu but if you click a hundred times refresh balances or check your balances then it will be a hundred entries made on the blockchain for each token you check one kind of token there is one entry you check another tokens there is another entry on the blockchain and every entry occupies some space like files on your hard drive or like using your phone, you know, at least it seems okay. But then all of a sudden the smartphone tells you like you run out of memory. I guess there are people who are now facing this situation and then you have to clear your memory because it's full of photos and then you have to store, move those photos somewhere. The same here, the more actively you use your wallet, the faster you run out of uh, RAM on your wallet. As for the CPU and net, well, they are a different breed of resources, kind of resources. That's why you don't run out, run out of them too, too fast. Thank you, Ivan. Let's move on. And the next question is from Salma Al Halasi Oman. I'm confused with the button claim in Eventy staking. This green button claim 
is green after pressing. Is it okay or should I continue clicking claim until it stops? Maxim, I saw that staking, yes, go to staking tab, world CIU for UNTB, yes. Let's look. Last time, this one was updated nine days ago, as it is written here. First of all, press it, enter your PIN code. If you haven't done anything for a long time, then on this dashboard, you may see one day ago or a week ago or two days ago. So most importantly, if it is written like this, then do it again. But here we see that updated a few seconds ago. This is what we need a few seconds ago. And then we see seven UNTBs unclaimed 7.0179, which means that now we will claim it. Enter your PIN code. And if it gets this way, it's right. But in case you haven't claimed it, then you will see some image and these seven UNTBs will come to your main balance. If you press, click refresh balances, it will be updated. Therefore, the green button means that you show it, but don't claim it. So therefore claim your UNTBs as this is your reward. Thank you, Maxime. And we move on. And the next question is from Italy. Enrico Campagnolo asks whether USDU are to be at Unitex exchange to withdraw UNTB and other, or other tokens or the number of tokens that exceed 50 US dollars, is it enough for you to withdraw tokens, UNTB or CIU tokens or other tokens? You don't need USDU, but it's important that your tokens all together worth over 50 US dollars. Next question is from Joseph Toman from the United States. Over once months, I could not claim my reward in the amount of 20,000 CIU in my blockchain wallet. Over one month, I could not claim my reward in the amount of 20,000 CIUs in my blockchain wallet. I added RAM, CPU, and NAT, but could not get C CIU after pressing green button. How can I claim my reward under Eventy CIU? At present, this function is fully functional. And if you are the lucky one and managed to stake your CIUs for Eventy, then you must go to tab CIU for CIU. Maxim, please show it. So here, Maxim doesn't have this option, but you must go there, stake CIU for CIU, and do everything we did, we showed before for UNTB, as staking is very similar. You, and it is functional. Yesterday, I actually claimed my CIUs from Eventy. Therefore, go, first of all, upload, and then claim it. Uh, and uh, find it in CIU for CIU. Thank you. Another question. 
from Maria Zamora, Costa Rica. When can we use US dollars as the trading currency? A good question, by the way. On blockchain, USDU is used, which is equal to one US dollars. When you top up the exchange, when you deposit on the exchange or when you deposit on the exchange or in the payment system, you may pay in US dollar equivalent, USDU, which equals to one US dollar. Ivan, would you like to add something? Yeah, I would like to. Uh, I wanted to add in terms of um, that at the mo on this blockchain, we have USDU created and to promote it, to popularize it, to make people use it more, we need to create places where it would be in demand, okay? And if we don't create those places, then why would we need it at all? We could use dollar, US dollar, but since we're creating our own ecosystem with our own infrastructure and the our own blockchain, as like in case of any blockchain, they have their own stable coin and that's why we have our stable coin too. So I don't know whether you saw it or not, but you can now withdraw Evo Rich bonus bonuses in usdu you can get them move them to your blockchain for example i have my partners who already withdraw withdrew uh, their bonuses then the exchange um, will create demand for usdu thanks to the trading pairs and like in binance you know on binance you have uh, dollar to bitcoin and you have usdt to dollar pairs right so since most people in the crypto world use uh, USDT to take profit, the stable coin, you know, for them to exchange them quicker, then uh, use the stable coin. And for those reasons, uh, USDU token was created for us to be able to exchange things and exchange not UNTB with the volatile price or CRUs or WCRU, but USDU, a stable coin, so that we don't lose anything on conversion and we work in the same, let's say, uh, stable environment and in stable, deal with stable numbers. So whether we're gonna have a dollar to UNTB or dollar to CRU, maybe in future we will have it, but I think it will be more correct to stimulate, to incentivize the circulation and the usage of our stable coin on our blockchain. It's logical, you know, to facilitate its uh, usage and topping up of the wallet. I know the topping up of the back office in USDU is under development right now, as far as I understand, remember. And then in future, when we will have topping up in USDU, then uh, all other cryptocurrencies and tokens will not be even necessary you know there will be no use for them if we have our own stable coin so there is no commission no nothing so you know you can pop up with no commission or with some minimum commission and it will facilitate and promote the usage of our own token this is it for me okay i would like to continue here uh claudia is saying the next uh, question we have from janine Loaiza Gomez from Colombia. I Colombia. I made several attempts to create my own blockchain wallet, and when I tried to check my twelve seed phrase, uh, twelve word seed phrase, I uh, did it several times, and I received the same message. So I decided to delete it and create it later. And then I fall ill with COVID, and now I'm opening my account to create it again, and I see that it has been created already, and I don't have that seed phrase. Please help me out. This is the only um, way for me to to open to have my future because I'm a single mother, and I invested $250 more than two years ago, and I very much hope that I will have my funds back. Okay. Look, lots of people uh, have the same 
problem and if you did not if you never please note guys if you never ever accessed your blockchain wallet which is very important if you never entered your blockchain wallet previously there was a, a chance for you to restore recover your seed phrase now we are still learning about or inquiring about it but most probably there will be a possibility for you to generate your seed phrase again for you to generate a new seed phrase provided that you never accessed your blockchain wallet this is a very important caveat right now i'm going to pass on your message to the support who which is responsible for that you gave us your email and you will receive in the near future a reply to your email address but if you already accessed your blockchain wallet and lost your seed phrase then unfortunately such back offices cannot be recovered there is no technical possibility for that so this is our answer thank you very much let's move on olga from russia says i have staked wcru's for untbs and CRUs for UNTBs. I have more WCRUs, less CRUs. But when I want to see the reward, I see the same UNTB amount in both cases because I have more WCRUs than CRUs. Or do I receive my UNTBs as a reward for staking both WCRUs and CRUs? Guys, when you cl claim your UNTBs, from staking WCRU or CRU, you are claiming all of your reward, both for WCRU and CRU. So it doesn't matter which, let's say, UNTBs you claim from WCRU or CRU. When you claim UNTBs from WCRU, you claim UNTBs for WCRU as well. So with one button, you claim both. That's why you see the same amount. Hopefully it's clear. So what you see is correct. It's the same. So you have, you claim the reward for both stakings. Okay. Let's go to the next. From the very beginning, when there was conversion of WCRU in W of CRU into WCRU, there were some mistakes, errors. At the moment, I still have some unconverted frozen CRUs. I uh, wrote several tickets to the support. The system told me that I can ignore it. I decided not to convert them. And now those CRUs are suspended in limbo. Uncompleted um, transactions. And the conversion fee is now very high. The wallet tells me that I have no frozen CRUs. Can I have those CRUs back in my portfolio? Well, uh, your ticket, your request has been passed on to the support service. And I think if you add your email, it would be really great. And uh, we will give you a, an extended answer to your email, okay, regarding your situation. There were several such uh, wallets which had some limited amount of CRUs that haven't been converted and suspended. It's like an exception from the rules than a rule, you know. And for such people, a solution is being developed and we will have the answer in the near future. So that we have a special team working on it. I think in the near future, you will get your answer. Okay, your solution. The next one, Joseph from the United States. How can I register for the professional investor category three and what would be the price? Uh, Joseph, uh, for that, you can go to the back office of the API, go to the EIPs trainings, and you can uh, choose the package that you want, which is in this case, category three professional investor. Thank you. Next one. 
we have Svetlana from Russia. I'm not going to read all of your questions because you have some very technical information in it. But Svetlana, your question has been passed on to the special department to handle it, okay? Because with so much detail, many details and technicalities, uh, you also need to add your email address, okay? Let's go to the next question. So I will answer your second question. What to do if I moved from my blockchain wallet, USD use UNTB to other people and already bought CRUs and sold UNTBs from my main wallet on the exchange. When I create a second wallet, will I be able to work with my second wallet on the exchange or is it linked to my main wallet? Very good question is whether I, I can uh, have two wallets linked to my Unitex account. Olga, you have the floor. As we were told today by the people who know it, the programmers, while you are working within the limits that you have, uh, uh, within the limits established for you, it doesn't matter from which wallet you move your money. So this is a very good answer. So you can uh, use any wallet, but within the established limits for your account. Let me remind you, Claudia says, it's $15,000 per year. And for withdrawal, Claudia, right? Yes, yes. Well, they said year. Я прошу прощения. No, they confirmed year, not months, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because if you move more than $15,000 a year, additional questions will be asked. And if you're able to confirm that the money is yours, then everything will be fine. You will just have to explain or confirm to the AML. You get verified and you prove the source and then uh, you can move more than $15,000 per year round. Let me add here, Ivan is saying, it is important to understand that this is a global standard for now, which is now, which is about controlling all the money movement, including blockchain assets. If we're talking about, let's say, if we go back to 2017, 2018, then many countries did not even consider cryptocurrency as a possibility. Currently, all the countries in the world are actively developing their own centralized cryptocurrencies, their own digital national currency, crypto ruble, crypto dollar, etc. And in parallel, there is a harshening of the regulations in the area of using this category of assets and money. Imagine a situation you go to a bank, your bank, okay? Let's say you work as a teacher and you receive, I don't know, $1,000 a month. Your salary is $1,000. And then all of a sudden, a million dollars comes to your account. Do you think the bank or your regulator or the taxation authority will have questions why all of a sudden you get a million dollars to your account? So what happened? What did you do to get a million dollars? Maybe you're selling drugs or arms, or maybe you're doing human uh, trafficking. I don't know. So it's um, a normal procedure to check whether that million dollars is legally um, earned. You know, If you did it, if you earned that money legally, if you uh, concluded a transaction, bought assets, or maybe sold your grandmom's uh, painting or received an inheritance, then if it's a legal clean money and you pass the check, no problem, there will be no problems. The same with cryptocurrency. Because all states understand that 
blockchain industry is developing very fast. That's why and becoming a global trend. And uh, we need to make sure everyone wants to make sure that everyone plays according to the rules. And Unitex Exchange is no exception. It is regulated by certain authorities. And uh, those authorities have questions to the exchange. Maybe it's a front for money laundering. Maybe they are running some uh, illegal operations. Maybe uh, it's not protecting their clients enough, clients that deposit money with this exchange. So it's not about the desires and wants of the exchange to prevent you from withdrawing or topping up money. No, the exchange is subject to regulations. And if there are certain regulations, the exchange has to observe them. A different question is whether the exchange can do, do it better or improve something, or for example, impose uh, limitations. For example, there are regulators limitations of not having more than $20,000 in uh, moving around. Maybe the exchange can impose even stricter restrictions, make it 15. So for example, the exchange may come up with better terms, but still within the established regulations. For example, in Belarus, there is this condition you can uh, handle $20,000 per year in the exchange without any verifications. With, if, the money, if the amount is bigger, then uh, show your income because the average salary in Belarus is $500. So an average Belarus national will earn how much? $6,000, right? Well, of course, if it's a highly skilled employee, the salary might be bigger and you will get $15,000. Well, maybe $20,000 if you are an IT guy or a manager, a director in the company. Yes, you can make $20,000. But if you make more than, if you want to move around $100,000 or a million dollars, just answer the question where that money comes from. And uh, you will have any, you won't have any problems with handling that amount of money. I just wanted to warn everyone, just for you to be ready, that the regulations will become harsher and harsher. And it is no coincidence that Andre recently presented or introduced the course, training course, the investment consultant and the Academy of Private Investor implemented the professional investor courses because the regulations will become stricter, harsher, and sooner or later, the regulators, central regulators will ask you, where do you, where do you, where you took that money from? It's not like a whim or a desire of the exchange itself. No, it's a standard practice. So do train, come to our webinars uh, and be ready for that. To be ready for any eventuality. Well, I would like to add here, Olga says, we're talking about the withdrawal of fiat money limit, which is $15,000. So let's uh, de clear, let's draw the di distinction here. So the limit for withdrawal in fiat is 15,000. Remember that. Another advantage of crypto unit blockchain and Unitex exchange is that we have all the documents in place transparent and ready to be produced. So if everything was official, you don't have to worry about it at all. Another thing, if, if it's P2P exchange, P2P transfers, then you can't simply smile and say, it's a gift from my friend, might not be sufficient. The regulator might uh, request uh, what kind of document you can provide to prove that. So. Friends, please understand that uh, this is the regulator's requirement. It's not like someone's desire or will about uh, imposing some kind of rules. No, we are working in a totally legal, transparent field. And we have to abide by the current law of the jurisdiction that we work in. And all those limits, to restrictions, regulations are all part of that uh, jurisdiction, okay? Thank you very much, all Claudia is saying. I wanted to add here, for business accounts, the limits are way higher and the possibilities are bigger. 
So if you are a uh, private uh, entrepreneur or a stock joint stock company or a company limited, you can open a business account on Unitex and your limits will be bigger. And as Olga said, you will get all the paperwork required for them and other taxation benefits. So please do use business accounts if necessary. Let's go to the next question from Svetlana Russia. My question is about staking CRU for CRU. I have staked 100,000 CRUs at 8%. On the 2nd of August, I unstaked 4,000 CRUs. Where will I see those 4,000 CRUs? Or will I see them only in three years? Let me remind you that... Even the staking is 8% CIU for CIU. And an important thing is that 4% is available immediately and the remaining 4% will be accessible after the end. And the reflection of this 4% is not seen, but there is a very good function. And many of you asked how much I will get and all lucky people with staking of CIU for CIU, you may go to your back office section, staking CIU for CIU, scroll down, and you will see the number of staked, the, the number of CIU staked for CIU. You will see another field, your accruals over three years and how much has already been accrued to date. These functions, these fields will be seen to you and the last field will change as these accruals will accumulate. And at the end of the timing, you will get the body of your, so the principle of your deposit of CIU for CIU, plus 4%. So these four monthly 4% 4 accruals, they will be available as well. So go there, see it, and you will see exactly how much you will get. And I believe this is very great option. Well, let's move on. And the next question is from Costa Rica. From... Maria E. Zamora, can, when can we use USDU for exchange? The question is not complete. I cannot answer it. Please make it more clear, clearer, more specific, as you can treat it in a different way. Exchange into what? Common Bernal Ramirez from Colombia asks how to activate your account of cryptocurrency on blockchain. Again, I don't really understand your question. Quite likely, you must from UGP Group or CIU back office, depending on the time when you joined or bought or got your tokens as a gift, you must go to CIU or UGP group back office, click portfolio and there generate your access key. And by the way, I will ask, there is a form on how to work with blockchain. It is available in uh, different languages. Vietnamese will be added. It is not still available, but it will be added. So please share it in the chat boxes. In many languages, it will be quite a good support as this is some guide on how to stake. Well, the next question is from Luis. Humberto Escobar Sanchez from Peru. I register, I'm registered and verified in Everage back office. 
Am I viewed as registered and verified in UGB group back office? Yes, Louis, that's right. If you signed up and verified in Everage back office, automatically, it means that you are signed up and verified in other back offices, including Academy of Private Investor, UGP Group. And if you bought before CIU EIPs, then you have access to CIU back office, and TNG back office. It depends on the time when you join the company. Therefore, all those back offices in Everage ecosystem, as soon as you sign up and verified in one of them, it means that automatically you are registered and verified in all the others. Miheda from India asks me, Mihanda from India. What is the price of World CIU one year after? Well, dear friends, the prices are difficult to forecast, but at the same time, it will depend on many factors. Who would like to announce these factors? Silence. I will answer this question then. The first key factor is how so the valuation of the global investment portfolio the value of the portfolio and the income it generates the number of people in average community and average ecosystem and it will depend on the willingness of world CIU holders to value those assets they have. Ivan, would you like to add something? Yes, regarding the price and the value, you have to you know, draw the distinction between those two things, the price and the value for something for some people don't see value in certain things and they don't buy those things others see the value and start buying like bitcoin has certain price and has value the value of bitcoin is is that it's an asset and it has potential like um like a new, the asset in the new crypto economy? Is it going to become the so-called crypto gold? So this is its value. So what's the value of a blockchain or Bitcoin blockchain? How much resource, uh, how much resource or how many resources it um, consumes? So those are the parameters that you can analyze without uh, considering the market price of Bitcoin. Whereas the market price or exchange price depends on the demand and supply psychology of the market players many manipulative manipulative behavior speculation so but it might not be directly correlated to the technical parameters of the blockchain or other in like objective things the same with the crypto unit blockchain and evil rich ecosystem if we're talking about the price of the token it's one side of the story. If we're talking about the value of the token, then we should remember about the new economic evolution in the world, that the way of thinking, the uh, minds of people is going to change in terms of their uh, mutual exchange and inter-exchange inter between people. It's going to be a shift in the paradigm. Before we had barter, remember? Go, let's go back in history. There were times when people didn't use money. They exchanged goods uh, by means of a barter. Someone uh, caught fish, others baked bread, and they exchanged fish for bread, for example. And then uh, some kind of money came up. Sometimes it was seashells, then we had uh, metal coins, then we had 
paper money, then we had plastic cards, and now Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And with every, let's say, stage in our development, we have new things coming up. And crypto, blockchain, crypto unit will change that paradigm. And our grandchildren will have a different view of payment compared to us. So what's the value of the blockchain itself and the, of the Everich ecosystem? The value is that we will have not just an interchange mutual settlement system, but we have assets, things that generate certain uh, payment units. What kind of payment units are they are going to be, whether it's stable units, dollars, doesn't matter. And we have a community. And that community is more than a million and a half registered users with seven or 800,000 real buyers, consumers of goods and services of that ecosystem. And that number is growing year to year. Facebook hasn't, didn't become a network with 2 billion accounts right away. So it all started in a uh, dormitory, students' dormitory, you know, hostel. If you saw the movie, The Social Network, you might remember. So if we talk about the price, then the WCRU in the back office costs 80 cents. But according to the business plan that Andrei Havratov devised in 2019, according to that plan provided that the portfolio value is a hundred trillion dollars and the number of users the holders of shares is equal to one billion then the cost the price of one wcru will be one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars per wcru but again it's an estimated price but if we add here the value of it as well, then the price of the WCRU may vary more. Nobody thought that Bitcoin would cost a $60,000. Just a couple of years ago, nobody could even fathom that it would cost 60000 That's why World CRU can have any imaginable price. It can be 100000 to a million. It can cost any money. Therefore, by the way, yesterday, uh, I told an interesting thing. The most expensive share is the share of Warren Buffett's fund, Hathaway. And it costs uh, like $310,000, something like that. So Bitcoin still has to you know, achieve some progress towards having that price. It still has growth potential, let's call it. And now talk about the potential of the tokenized share of the global investment portfolio registered with the SEC. So is it able to make uh, like the half of the path that Warren Buffett's fund share achieved? I think yes. So think about it. What What's your price and what's your value? Warren Buffett, since they don't pay out dividends, but look, at the same time, they have investment portfolio of their investments into different segments. And look, it's quite similar to World CIU's business model, portfolio investing. And I believe quite likely that we will see these prices for World CIU as well. L well, let's move on. Thank you very much for your comment. And the next question is from uh, Tatiana Biristavaya, Ukraine. I have 20 frozen World CIU. Do I understand it correctly that if I stake them, I will increase them in number and it means mining. Is that right? Well, if you stake your world CIUs for UNTB, you will get other tokens, valuable tokens, but different tokens. And in this situation, your world CIU will mine and give you a reward in UNTB. So it's not possible to mine world CIU for world CIU. 
well, dear friends, we see that you have a lot of questions. We read your chats, we see it, but we have a preliminary prepared list. I will ask our admins, if possible, share the question form in the chat boxes. If you have some other questions open after this detailed discussion, please add them to this questionnaire. It will be viewed and quite likely then during our next meetings, you will get responses to your questions. So look, we cannot actually in one go answer all your uh, answer all your questions you see that all these questions were received from different countries they were collected and now we look through this first list and answer these questions if there are still some questions open include them to the form. Admins will share them in the chats and write your questions down as we see that you have masses of questions. But today we will answer only those that we manage. I believe that we will work for another 30 minutes and uh, We'll postpone all the rest for the for our next meeting. The next question is about the withdrawal of tokens from Unitex Exchange to other exchanges and vice versa. Ivan, could you please comment and answer this question? Myself? Yeah, okay, I can. Uh, look, first of all, I recommend everyone withdraw money from any exchange to your own wallets if you are moving money from exchange to exchange the exchange might consider it as a way of uh, hiding your source of income and so on and so forth so many exchanges have a certain have certain requirements that to top up and withdraw money from your exchange you need to use your own accounts and some exchanges will ask you, have the right to ask you for confirmation that the place you are withdrawing your money to is owned by you. To avoid risks, if the amount of money is big, then I recommend you use some reliable wallet that you move money to and then from that wallet you move that money to some other place well it should be a crypto wallet with a closed key that you have it not like an account somewhere but a wallet where you personally can manage your money and if the amount is small and you want to make such payment transfers then please note that in this case, you have to make sure that you can confirm to one of the exchanges that this account is yours. Let's say you have two banks, okay? An example, you keep money in one bank and you keep money in another bank. You move money from one bank to the other bank and you give them the bank account. And the bank might ask you, whom are you sending money to? And you should be able to provide like the second bank's statement that it is your account, that this is your account, your money, but this account is uh, in a different bank, not in the first bank. So the same is here with the cases of exchanges. Like say in Russia, they, we have Sberbank and Tinkoff Bank. If you move money from one account to another, it's the same with exchanges. But still, I recommend you choose one main exchange in your region that would give you the best, uh, the highest quality of service and work with one exchange only. 
money loves quiet you know the less you move that money around from one exchange to another the better you lose time you lose money on commissions if you are a trader then choose one, two, maybe three exchanges, tops, depending on what kind of category of assets you're going to trade in and work on those exchanges. And nobody's going to ask you any inconvenient questions from the regulators or the exchanges themselves. It will be easier for you to prove your sources of income. So this is my two pence. And uh, I did face situations when exchanges block clients accounts because they sent money to different crypto wallets including the crypto wallets of different hypes and pyramids that turned into scam and people couldn't prove prove uh, where they sent that money to because the websites were down and you know it's a very difficult situation very difficult negotiations that follow after to show and explain that, look, this money has lost money to a financial pyramid. And it's more about, it's not more about the exchange, but the exchange reports to financial regulators. Yes, of course, because it comes from the exchange's account. Because by paper, on paper, the exchange sent money. And what if that money went to the some fraudsters account and then the regulator starts asking questions and the exchange will face problems that's why the exchange safeguards itself and then people in the on the internet says this exchange is bad it blocked my account and they say nothing about them violating the rules of the exchange and setting the exchange up with their shady transactions nobody writes about that online so please be careful it's your money. The exchange is just an instrument that helps you, helps you multiply your money and adequately use the profits of your money. Thank you, Ivan. We continue. Tatiana Beristavaya from Ukraine writes down that I joined global investment portfolio and in my crypto unit wallet of World CIU, as a reward, I get UNTB tokens. How is it related to global investment portfolio? Tatiana, look, the relation is the following. You get one of types of income. And in more detail, your question was answered throughout our course. UNTB is one type of reward, and the whole course, Fundamentals of Blockchain, aimed to answer your question. Please watch it again, and I believe you will understand it. The next question is from India, from Tolkham. What is decentralized? Ivan, will you answer it? Yeah, decentralized. Well, I guess you're talking about exchanges, right? Well, in simply decentralized. Well, decentralized meaning no center, the absence of a center. There are centralized things with something that have a like command center. And there are decentralized things that do not have a single command point. And it is not regulated by the central regulator, but is regulated by mathematics or some simple rules. So that's what decentralized means. Let me give you a simple example. Imagine a road and there are traffic rules. Well, those of you who drive, and even if you're not, you know what traffic rules are. And there are situations when there is a traffic warden, you know, paratrooper in the middle of the street, directing the traffic, managing the traffic instead of these road signs and light tra traffic lights they're showing it to you with their stick you know but if we don't if we have road signs and traffic lights then the cars they uh, move along the roads without the central regulator they abide by the pre-established rules and those rules they work on all the crossroads 
there are road signs, there are traffic uh, lights, and mostly no accidents. But there are uh, cases when the police officer comes in and everyone has to listen to the police officer. In the banking system, it's similar. In the banking system, there is a central command point, whereas blockchain technologies brought into that area, into that industry, decentralization, thanks to the technology itself. Blockchain is about distributed ledger. When every user has some um, algorithm of interaction within the ecosystem, within the blockchain. All the transactions, all the transfers are conducted in the same way. The commission is charged the same, whether you move a million dollars or if you move a hundred dollars. The commission is calculated according to the same principle. So there is no centralization, centralized management needed. And finance are now moving to the decentralization phase. But in terms of regulation or money laundering on other things, decentralization is not always good because it allows uh, you know, criminals to do criminal things. That's where uh, authorities get involved, not in regulating the blockchain or cryptocurrencies, because you can't really regulate blockchain or cryptocurrencies, but you can regulate organizations that work with blockchains and cryptocurrencies. You can forbid them doing something, you can allow them to do something and so on. And if we're talking about exchanges, there are centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Centralized exchanges are exchanges where people decide whom the money should be sent, uh, where the money should be blocked. You can send to this person, you can send to that person. And there are decentralized exchanges where everything works according to the pre-established algorithm. Hopefully I answered your question. Thanks a lot. Let's move on. And the next question is from Peru, from Baldramina Ramas. Why should I buy World CIU again? to pass a test for this course. I paid for the elite club 100 units in March, and now I see they reduced the price to 10 units only. Look, first of all, you don't have, or you must not do it. It's not your obligation. And no one could force you pass this test. It's only subject to your wish consent. And in terms of the elite club, the price of 10 units is only at this stage. It may be extended, but we know some inside things and you'd better take advantage of this right away. But this is voluntarily. If you want to take advantage, you will do it. If you don't want, you won't do it. If you bought the Elite Club membership for 1,000 units in March and bought World CIU for 50 cents, this is your benefit or even cheaper than 50 cents rather than you bought it this month. Or you know, since the first UGPA group there, one world CIU will cost not 80 cents, but one US dollars. And therefore, everyone may estimate when and how much to pay. Yeah, I would like to add. I wanted to add here one more thing Ivan is saying, that you can um, consider any situation from different perspectives, positive and negative, you know. So unfortunately, there are partners who receive it. So why did I buy it for 100 and now it's 10? And you explained correctly, yes. If you get down and calculate a person who has, I don't know, $1,000 or $500, what do they get? by paying for the VAP sub club subscription. They received more tokens than a person who pays for it right now. They pay less for the elite club, but they get 
uh, fewer tokens at the same price, you know, for the same money. So in this case, uh, you can uh, interpret that story from different angles. The company again meets its partners halfway and trying to make you pay as little as possible, save as much money as possible, but receive more. People who paid more for the VAP club in the past enjoyed better prices. Now you have to pay more, uh, you get to pay more uh, for the token, but the VAP club costs less. So the $90 price difference is an opportunity for people to buy a little bit more because they didn't do it in the past. So guys, please, a look at it at a silver lining, like a uh, something extra and not as a negative thing. And another Ivan? Yes, I would like to add to the first part of the question uh, regarding the test. Yes, you could take the test without the purchase. This course is for free and the test was available to anyone who registered in the company. But for you to participate in the lottery, of gifts with your test score. You needed to make a purchase. So you could take a test if you're just registered. This news, it was available for everyone in all the back office. Thanks, Ivans. Dear friends, you decide, but it was important from the technical point of view, first of all, but I believe that in future, everyone who did it, everyone bought for 10 or 20 or much more, everyone decides for himself whether he would like to buy and how much. And I believe that over time, you will understand the value of this purchase as one of the most important for those who did it for the first time. And if it is not your first purchase of World CIU, then accordingly, all your modest investments will pay back eventually, but no one forces you. It is all done voluntarily. Well, the next question, comes from Maria Margarita Guardada Rivera from Spain. May I get a gift of UNTB at Unitex Exchange? Thanks, Andre, and all those who shares great information with us. At Unitex Exchange, to get UNTB as a gift, you cannot get it. But maybe, maybe later the company will offer some gifts. Do you remember, please remind me if we talked about Unitex referral system? No, we didn't. Look, one of the ideas to be announced is that there is a MLM program at Unitex Exchange and if you invite your partners to join Unitex Exchange, you will get income from the volumes and sales generated. This is one level, multi-level partnership program, not from the sales, but from the commission of the exchange. As some people believe, that there is uh, uh, 1 million in sales and 20% will come to your wallet. You know, for each transaction at the exchange, there is a commission, a fee, and 20% of this commission of those partners registered um, subject to your referral number, 20% of the commission on top of those transactions from your partners in the first downline. Look, to say the fee is five US dollars, then 20% dollars of this um, commission and your reward will be one USDU. 
And the question above, whether it could be possible to exchange, yes, there are additional options for exchange. Great. Well, dear friends, you know, there is such a great statement that a penny makes a dollar. And quite likely, you have a similar phrase or similar statement or saying, and make sure that any coin turns into the US dollar. And therefore, if you go to the exchange on your own and recommend the exchange to your friends, to those people you know, then in your balance, you will see some accruals and partnership bonuses that you will like. And if you take advantage of the prices available now, for UNTB, CIU, and you will use this time to increase your capital, then quite likely you will enjoy it a lot. Well, therefore, we wanted to please you with this partnership program already functional at Unitex, but it is only one level and 20% from the commission generated. As Olga said, for instance, your partner deposits 1,000 at the exchange and makes a purchase at 1,000 US dollars. The commission of the company is 0.5%. And meaning that 20% of this five US dollars as the company's commission will be shared with you and it will be accrued to your account, to your balance. And the more people you invite then from these commissions on sales and purchases of your partners, you will get your percentage of the commission. But this is one level referral program. Another type of income, therefore, share your referral links you may find in your back offices and you may share them by sharing about another type of income or instrument available. Thank you for this question. It was about UNTB, but uh, we answered it about another gift you can get from Unitex Exchange. Well, the next question is from Princiotta Giuseppe from Italy, if a person already bought World CIU, do we need to make other purchases within the relevant timing? Quite likely, you mean the period for passing a test. So this gift period, the purchase of World CIU to get a gift is important over the course, over the time of the course to meet the conditions of the course and all those conditions set to get your gift. And then it's important if you want to participate in the lottery, but it is not the continuous campaign it will be, there will be another one, but please remember that the demand for UNTB, we already explained how it will be driven. And therefore those gifts that everyone who meets the conditions will get, I believe that you will see and understand how they grow in price quite soon in terms of the capitalization. Well, the next question is from Czech Republic, Pavel Vavrik. Could you please explain in detail the opening of a business account for issue of the coins on CIU of on crypto unit blockchain? All the information on corporate accounts will be received in September in more detail. Therefore, attend open and closed webinars and quite soon the details will be provided about the procedure to do it, the procedure to issue the coins and to open accounts on blockchain. 
Olga Kursakova from Norway. Will it be possible to pass a test for the investment consultants in Norway in the Russian language? Olga, you can buy the course and you can pass the tests within one year. But in terms of the confirmation as a, as a certificate receipt, you will need to fly either to Moscow or there will be an agreement reached with many universities of the globe for passing an exam for the qualification of the investment consultant. It will not be only in Russia, but other countries as well. But you may start by this course. And as you know, there are good discounts for this course available. Next question comes from Juan Senguja Abarca from Ecuador. Why Ecuador is not allowed to create accounts on Unitex and Global Unit Pay? Only with the identifier. Today, we asked this question, referred, forwarded your question to some experts, and all of them say that Ecuador can register and sign up at Unitex Exchange and in Global Unit Pay, but check the documents you upload, whether you upload those documents which are really required. And I will remind you that right away there is restructuring. Additional payroll is hired for Unitex and, and verification will be quicker and easier. So the capacity of those people who will verify you will be built, but in case of any issues of verification or issues about the exchange, you'd better contact the help desk after the 1st of September. The next question is from Kyrgyzstan, Sadikali Abdildayevich. Please explain the way to top up the wallet with USDU. You may top up in three ways. Either go directly from your card. Ivan Poluyanchik, could you please comment and answer this question? Well, you're talking about topping up uh, your global unit pay account, correct? Or how to top up USDU wallet? This is the question. USDU wallet, right? On the blockchain. Well, you can top it up currently by through the exchange. You do it through the exchange. You can uh, uh, top it up with Bitcoin, Ethereum, fiat money, or our CRU tokens unlocked and UNTBs that you mind and exchange them for USDUs. This is the first way. The second way is to receive bonuses in Evo Rich for the promotion of goods and services, and then request for submit a request for withdrawal to your blockchain account. I know that work is on the way for, for people to be able to buy USDU in global unit pay and withdraw them to glo to the exchange or blockchain. For now, you can buy Bitcoin Ethereum in a global unit pay. You top it up with fiat. Uh, then you can buy USDT, USDC. And well, it's technicalities, you know, depends, uh, you know, all those pairs require extra hands. But in the near future, the back office 
as far as I know, to move money to the back office. Well, to, to put it better, all the settlements and payments in the ecosystem will be in USDU and there will be more ways and methods to top up and withdraw USDUs. And I hope that very soon when we have like a million and a half people using USDU instead of USDT, then coin market cap will ask, what is this token? Uh, maybe we should uh, list it too. Lots of people using it and we don't know anything about it. I will agree that on crypto unit blockchain it's possible and you know it will attract a lot of new users to blockchain the resources where it's used well great dear friends we will answer another two questions only as we've been together for two hours online and the next question is about the increase in RAM in CPU, so where to post it, where to find this staking. This is from Lydia Holodinska, Belarus. Go back to our session by Ivan Tolkachev and Maxim Listovets, session number two and session number four, respectively, and there you will get all the details and the question from Mirta Jacqueline Manrique Escobar from Peru. What is mining? Well, this question was discussed in detail at, in session one by Ivan Paluyanchik, which the first session of this course fundamentals of blockchain. Well, we are very grateful to all of you for your time, your attention. Hopefully this session was of use. I do know that there are a lot of questions not answered yet, but please fill out the question forms, forms for your questions so that we will accumulate them all, collect them all, and we'll get answers to them. Thank you very much for staying with us, for your interest to the course Fundamentals of Blockchain, and for being a part of Everage. We'll see you soon. And I wish you a good continuation of the day or night, evening. Good luck. and. 1,250 US dollars per each world CIU to start from. Good luck to everyone. Bye-bye.